About two years ago, I made a video showing how to use the IoT T-Stick as USB computer interface to run software like JMRI and the like. I demonstrated that using an FTDI programmer board, but never followed up with a dedicated hardware, and there were good reasons for that. But things have changed, so let me introduce to you the Brown Hat computer interface. Welcome to the IoTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. The first time I showed how to connect the IoTT stick to a USB port was in video number 45. At the time I built a simple open LCB interface and needed a way to connect to a PC. So I used an FTDI programmer board which I had laying around and hooked it up to the headset of the IoTT stick. In video number 63 I then built on that setup and released a configuration page for it. I called it Brown Hat and ever since the Brown Hat option has been part of the IoTT stick configuration and could be used with any USB serial converter. I also announced in those videos that I was planning on doing a specific Brown Hat hardware that can be used as computer interface like the LocoBuffer USB or the Digitrax PR4 board, but I never followed up on this. Until today. To design the Brown Hat PC board, I basically have two options. The first is doing a board that has its own USB to serial converter chip on it, along with an USB connector and a few other components. I looked into that, but at the time did not find a converter chip for a reasonable price, and making an expensive board was not something I was interested in. The second possibility is using a converter board like the FTDI programmer and just do a small interface carrier board around it. Boards like the FTDI programmer are produced in large quantities, therefore they are cheap and the integration is easy, mainly just interfacing it to the 3.3V interface of the IoT stick. The problem with that option was that all the boards I checked either featured a mini USB or a micro USB connector, and I did not like that. I wanted to have an USB-C connector on the brown head, as it is much more durable, made for being connected and disconnected quite more often, and as it is used in smartphones much more common than the somewhat outdated earlier versions. A few weeks ago I came across a USB to serial converter board on AliExpress that had the features I wanted, USB-C, small and cheap. So I designed a small PCB with a few interface components and a 3D printed housing. And here is the brown hat. As always, all design information is on the GitHub page, so you can download it and make your own which in this case is really easy. You can order the converter PCB from the AliExpress link in the description. The semi-assembled boards you can get from JLC PCB. To order, go to the JLC PCB webpage and click on Instant Quote. Then upload the Gerber file and select the quantity, board color and thickness you want. If you don't want to solder the SMB components yourself, you can use the PCB assembly option. Here you can upload the bill of materials and the robot placement file and select the components you want to have assembled. Select the SMB components but not the pin headers. Once you receive the board, you install the 90 degree angled pin header for the IoT stick and the converter board. Then you print the enclosure and install the board in it. Real easy and a nice project even if you are not used to build your own electronics. On the other hand, if you are not into DIY at all, I will also provide a very limited quantity in the Tindy store. So if you prefer to buy one assembled, tested and ready to go, you have that option as well. So how to connect and set the brown head up and what can it do? Well. Setup is simple and straightforward. 
you take the brown hat and connect it to the IoTT stick. On the other side of the IoTT stick you connect a Loconet interface breakout board which connects to the Loconet of your layout. The USB-C connector of the brown hat connects to the USB cable from your computer. That's the entire hardware setup. Note that the brown hat does not provide a galvanic separation of Loconet ground and computer ground. Normally this is not really needed because the Loconet ground should be the same as your computer ground. If you have any concerns you can measure the voltage between the USB-C plug of the brown hat and your computer ground before you connect the interface. There should be no significant voltage, not more than maybe just a few millivolts. And if you prefer galvanic separation, you can use a USB isolator like this one here. It provides complete galvanic separation of ground and 5V between the brown hat and the PC. I leave a link in the description below. On the software side, you connect the IoTT stick to Wi-Fi and load the configuration page. Select Loconet interface as command source and brown hat as hat module. After saving the basic setup, the stick web page shows the USB serial tab. On that tab you can set the baud rate you want to use. By default it is set to 57600 as this is the baud rate JMRI is using. With other software you might be able to use a faster baud rate. Just select it from the drop down list then click save and restart to make it permanent. In JMRI you configure the brown hat as loco buffer USB. To do so set up a connection to Digitrax Loconet via loco buffer USB. This is done in the preferences window under connections. Set the serial port and the command station and that's it. When everything is set up, the IoTT stick starts sending Loconet messages from Loconet to JMRI and messages received from JMRI are sent to Loconet. You can easily verify that by opening the Loconet viewer on the stick and the viewer window of JMRI. You will see the same messages show up simultaneously. To test the communication from JMRI to Loconet, open the turnout control board and send turnout commands to the layout. But wait, that's not all. With the brown hat you can also activate one or any combination of the communication servers so your stick can serve as Vice Throttle Server, Loconet over TCP Server or MQTT Gateway. If the Vice Throttle Server is activated, you can use Engine Driver on an Android phone or Vice Throttle on an Apple device. When the app is started, the Vice Throttle Server shows up in the list of available servers. Connect to it and run your trains. Loconet over TCP can be used to connect JMRI or other train control software via Wi-Fi. Simply activate the server, then set the port number you want to use. This must be the same as you will be using on the client. By default it is set to 1234 and there is no real reason to change that. In JMRI you can use the same Loconet settings but instead of a serial port you specify the IP address of the server. The IP address is displayed on the IoTT stick once it is connected to Wi-Fi and it is also displayed in the footer section of the stick configuration page. If you plan on using your Loconet via internet from remote locations, then using an MQTT server is your best option, as you can connect to public servers like HiveMQ or Mosquito. Simply activate the MQTT gateway option and enter the IP address of a public or private server and you are ready to go. If you need more help, watch video number 53 for more information. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you now have a better idea how the brown hat can serve as low-cost USB interface for your Loconet system and at the same time act as Vice Throttle, Loconet or TCP or MQTT server 
for your throttles and other devices. If so, please click the like button below to let me know. It helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general, so I appreciate. Also, this is the perfect opportunity for you to hit the subscribe button if you are not yet subscribed to the IOTT channel. Click it right now and you will always be in a premium seat when new videos are published. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.